So, Brittany and Wyland, you both came to a point where you were broken as a couple, but perhaps even more so as individuals. So, uh, I, I think that's the key here, and we need to, uh, to focus on that. First of all, Brittany, take a moment. I want you to look at this photo. And when you look at this photo, what do you see? I just see, you know, that was the hardest time of my life. And um, I was so, so, so gone, so far gone in my addiction that, you know, we nobody knew. He didn't know if I was going to come back from that. Um, I was at my lowest of lows. And the only thing, you know, keeping me moving forward at that time and, and that really got me sober was my our kids, my kids. Brittany, when you look at that picture, I see you getting emotional. When you look at the woman in that picture, what what does she need to hear back then? You know, just that it you can overcome all of the things that you don't think you're going to be able to get through. There is help out there. There is a whole nother life uh, that um is more amazing than you will ever know, but you just got to get through that. You've got to get through it. So Brittany, I mean, going back to that picture, that that place in time, I mean, you actually were waking up in the morning and you immediately started drinking. I mean, dire straits. Yes. Yeah. It was at that point towards the end, you know, it wasn't always like that when I was drinking, but that's where it ended. It was to the point where I had to drink in the morning, um, just to wake up. And it was, it was such a sad place to be. I was so depressed. Um, and it's, it's something I like actually physically couldn't control. I, I just, for me to be okay, I physically had to have that drink in the morning. We call that an eye over, you know? Um, and that's, yeah. that's, that's one of the, you wake up with the shakes, right? You wake yeah. up and you hadn't had a drink in three hours, your hands start trembling. Tr tr yes. And, that, and that, your brain interprets that anxiety and that anxiety tells you I'm not okay. And not only am I not okay, I'm not in control of this thing. And it's yeah. terrifying. It really mm -hmm. is. Subsequently, you were separated and you went no contact for six months. What what mm -hmm. led you back to one another? It was Thanksgiving and I dropped the kids off at his house and um, I said, hey, come over here. <laughs> and um, I asked her for a hug. And for me, that's what um, I don't know. It had been so long and like for me, that's, that's what kind of broke down those walls that I had put up was a simple hug. Um, <laughs> it was just, yeah. And we just kind of agreed at that point, it was just going to be like, Hey, let's get along for, for the, the sake. sake. Like our kids deserve to have two parents that can, can get along and, you know, can co-parent. And so that is pretty much where, uh, it, yeah, that's it. That's where it started. That's huh? where it started. Hey, the power was, of the hug, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It works. So, so Wyland, tell us what, why was it different at that time? I mean, I, I can see it. I can sense it. Thanksgiving, family, the kids are there. You'd been away from each other, working on your own, uh, getting yourselves as individuals tuned up. And I, I guess something at that time changed, clicked, right? I remember after that hug and, you know, a little bit after we, we, you know, had some deep conversations and it was the very first time I found myself, you know, she explained some things going back from our history when we were sitting there. And, and I, it was the first time I remember just apologizing heartfelt uh, without any strings attached. And so no, not an, uh, and you know, I'm sorry that I did that, but I did that because this is what you did. There was none of that. And that didn't even come to my mind at the time when I apologized, it was just, Hey, I'm sorry. And, and that was it. Like, I didn't expect anything in return. Um, and for some reason, I, <laughs> it made a large impact on her. 